So in the last week, I've cleaned up the garage pretty well. And when you first saw this, this was an absolute mess. So this is now my, my off-season uh, rigging station. What I'm doing now is going through you know, each lure, uh, whether it's a teaser or um, you know, an already rigged lure with the hook, and I'm making sure that you know all the monofilament or fluorocarbon leaders are uh, you know unscuffed and and new, and that the hooks are in good condition. So this, for example, is a Molecraft uh, Wide Ranger. Um, it's the large one that I really like as a teaser. About four feet behind a uh, daisy chained uh, squid chain. Um, this brings up a lot of fish. So we'll go through some of these and uh, at the end I'll show you my favorites. Okay, here's another one. This is another uh, mold craft, you know, soft rubber. Um, I think this is a chugger, super chugger. And again, black, purple, and uh, silver. Uh, nice big eyes that move. Uh, rig with 200 pound monofilament. Again, no hook. Uh, rig as a teaser. And again, four to five feet, no more than five feet behind a squid chain. Works really well. So here on my workbench, I have these lures kind of arranged by color um, and purpose here. So I have my three Moldcraft teasers, actually four. I have a couple Islander kind of ballyhoo covers here. Um, then I have some, you know, my birds, a couple miscellaneous lures. And then I have them arranged by color here with the black and purple, black, purple, silver. Um, Another Moldcraft, another, uh, uh, what is this, Bart, Big Bart, Black Bart, Lure, um, my Marlin Candy, Big Lure rigged for uh, Blue Marlin with um, a chain gang hook, um, another Zuckers, so Zuckers, uh, ZM 5.5, nice size lure for a bigger fish. A couple of the seven strand original uh, EAL, the electronic acoustic lures. I got a Ballyhooed um, green and black. I have a high five green and black. Uh, a couple more Murayama lures by. Uh, Tommy, uh, miscellaneous heavy swimmer, another Murayama, a couple more seven strand, another Moldcraft, a great Coggins head, jet head, lure, great, great, great bait. A couple really old uh, miscellaneous like Fenwick lures that have caught a lot of fish over the years but not for a long time because I haven't used them. Uh, another Black Bart uh, rum candy, great high speed trolling lure. Some miscellaneous black, purple and kind of skipjack color, different heads. Another seven strand uh, EAL, Cousins EAL. Happy ending lure, another nice Holsey lure. I like this lure, it's a small bait, kind of like an anchovy. Um, nice heavy jet head. And one, two, three, I don't know, four high five lures. This one got quite a, quite a few fish on last year, this squid color. And uh, your classic uh, Zuckers 3.5s, Macro Clone. Love this one with the exaggerated stripes. Another really nice kind of bleeding mackerel by uh, 
happy ending lures right there and uh, some miscellaneous other Fenwicks another high five Zuckers 3.5 another happy ending in pink and uh, some Williamson lures and another another seven strand so here's my whole kind of selection of baits here and what we're going to do now is go over some uh, rigging strategies. Okay, you can see the difference in the clarity of the heads. This one caught a lot of fish in 2015. And if you look closely, it's uh, pretty well smacked. So it's got a lot of, uh, you know, scratches, bill marks indentations and uh still works that's for sure so zookers gotta be in the lineup so so what i'm going to describe is is uh by no means the only way to rig a uh, marlin lure but this is the way i've decided to rig my rig my jigs and um you know, follow along and see if it's something you like. So over the years, I've learned a few things about lure rigging. And one thing I've heard pretty consistently is that the hook for the lure should be about the same size as the head of the lure. So clearly, this is just about a perfect fit. As you can see from the package here, this is a owner Jobu big game seven aught hook it's painted black it does scratch but tends to be really really sharp out of the box and that is what I'm going to use for this demonstration I also have a crimper crimping tool this one happens to be by Iserline. I have a heat shrink tube. I have a few uh, sleeves there. And I have 200 pound Andy. I also have Iserline 150 pound clear. For my smaller lures and my, uh, like my Zuckers 3.5s, I do like to use a um, a little bit lighter of a lure or leader so in this case I'm going to use 150 pound clear eyes line um, and I think it you know allows the lure to swim more naturally and is plenty of strength for your typical Southern California Marlin as you can see this is almost an exact fit okay so the first thing I do I take my unrigged lure I put this 150 pound test Iser line clear monofilament leader material through the end. I'm going to take two sleeves, double barrel, and slide them over the end. Then my hook. I don't know what this is called, but I like to do two times through the eye of the hook. Two times through here. And then back up one of the sleeves for now. Pull that real nice and tight down on the hook. Which in and of itself almost limits the movement of the hook. Almost, not quite. Then take that one sleeve and again, pull it real tight down toward the hook eye. 
Okay, so that's pretty much the terminal end. Later on, I'll put a heat shrink tube right over that connection. Okay, moving down, you want to make sure you leave enough slack here on that tag end to where when you push it up toward the head, it's going to finish off, you know, where you want it. Okay, I'd like it to where just, you know, the curve of the hook <clears throat> is slightly outside of the skirt. I like the tip of the, you know, the point of the hook inside the skirt. Now, as you can see, I have the hook through the eye on the workbench. I've pulled it real tight. I have my sleeve way down on my knot. And I will go ahead and crimp this. Okay. Wall tight. I twist it about seven, eight times depending on how far up the leader I want it. And remember, I have my lure here, and I'm just gonna take another one, same size, and I'm gonna approximate you know, where I want that sleeve. And you can see this would be just about right. So I'm gonna hold it with my thumbs, and I'm gonna slide this new one right over it. Unfortunately, I missed it. Ah, there we go. Okay, and that's just for one last measurement. I'll take my another 3.5 here and I'll approximate it. That's just about perfect. I'll slide it down a little bit and then pull it while pulling tight with this twisted mono. I'll compress this double barrel right where I want it. And I do not tighten the very ends so there's less of a chance of it breaking on itself. If you look at that, it's a little bit of a, I don't know, a bone shape where the ends are less compressed. And you can notice that on both of these connections. Okay, so here's my relatively finished product. It's fishable right now. But at this point, I have my hook with my sleeve, and now I'm going to heat shrink. This really, to me, finishes it off makes that hook uh, stay in line with the leader, which I think increases the hookup ratio. Okay, so this is my completed lure with an appropriately heat shrinked connection. Pulled tight, you can see where the uh, termination is, where the hook is. And there are many, many ways to finish the, uh, I guess, leading end of the lure. This is all I do. I uh, do that same kind of doubled up, you know, loop there with one sleeve. Sometimes I put two sleeves on. Uh, very rarely will I put a ball bearing swivel on the end because there already is one on the, um, you know, on the end of the wind-on leader. Uh, that connects to my main line. So that's it. That's a lure and uh, hope it helps.